One of my eBay buying policies is that if something looks too good to be true, then buy it for the entertainment value. And that's why I bought this power bank, which it says, mixed colours power bank, 10,400 milliamp power with charging cable, great. And then it goes off the edge here, great quality. And it came from a UK seller called 2014.offers. And one of the things they specifically note is, brand new and good quality power bank, guaranteed 10,600 milliamp hour capacity. It's not. Uh, but you probably guessed that already. And it comes in this very neat package. Keep in mind that uh, for effectively £7, including shipping, two quid of that will probably have been shipping, so it doesn't leave an awful lot. Save a fiver, basically. So it comes in this nice, solid plastic case. And it's quite a smart unit. It's got the four little LEDs in the front that show the charge status. It's got the usual little USB lead. And one of the first things I did was... Uh, I charged it up. It, I'm trying to remember, did it have a charge in it? I don't think it had a charge in it when it arrived. So, or if it did, I drained it down as I usually do by sticking in something like one of these fairly high power LED lights. Just basically put it in, sit it in a corner and wait for the light to go out and that's it discharged. Then I fully charged it and I monitored it uh, using the port of power unit. Uh, I'll bring in this. This is not the port of power unit, but something similar. The port of power is a bigger charger I've got, a bigger charge analyzer that it is quite accurate in measuring the current and charge into something. And it was really odd because when I started charging it, it started charging at a nice 500 milliamps uh, charge current. And the LEDs rapidly lit up to the point that you're thinking, oh, that's, that's really tiny capacity then because of the speed it's charging up. But then it just sat there and the current dropped and it just kept charging and charging to the point I was thinking, is this, are they cheating? Is this just to make it look like it is, you know, taking a really huge charge? Is there something like a resistor in here just trickling some of that charge current away continually just to keep, you know, that effect that it is charging up? The other thing I considered was that maybe the cells were faulty and they were self-discharging as fast as I could charge them. So I popped it open. And popping it open is quite interesting. The construction of these is really nice. If you uh, remove the cap from one end, the whole lot just basically just pops out. It's got a drawer that goes in. Like that. And at the other end, it's got this little uh, catch plate. And the unit has this sort of slot routed in at each end. And what actually happens is that when you slide this in, this end sits into the slot, this sits into the slot, and when they mate together, it kind of latches in, it cl clicks and latches, which is quite a clever way of doing it. I quite like that. The inside is immaculate in the sense that it's got the lovely construction of this plastic drawer that contains the four cells, and they are all real cells. One of the common tricks uh, with this sort of cheapy products is to have sand filled cells, basically weighted cells that are, they've got the electrical tabs connected, but there's nothing electrically connected inside. And what happens with that is uh, it looks like you've got the full number of cells, but of course the capacity is greatly reduced. The capacity in this case was, uh, when I charged it up, it was like basically one amp hour per cell. It came into just under four amp power. And I found that out because to actually test this, I desoldered this pack and I connected it to, where is it, where is it, I've got it up here somewhere, have I got it somewhere, have I just misplaced that, I probably have, no there it is, I use this as a little tester, it's basically the inside of a USB power bank, a chilli pepper shaped one, that had a disappointingly high self discharge, so I decided to repurpose it just as a tester. And what I do with this is that I connect the batteries to it and then I can connect them onto it and uh, after it's been fully discharged, I can then charge it up to the hilt uh, at a con consistent rate because I get the feeling that maybe the reason this thing cut uh, down the current quite dramatically was because uh, it was reacting thermally. It was getting quite hot, uh, the charge circuit. But this charged up. It indicated that it was roughly 4 amp hours total. And I then put it in the explosion containment pie dish and just left this and just occasionally monitor the voltage on it to see if it dropped. And initially it did stabilise down a bit and then it stayed put. So it, the cells are fine. They are just one amp hour cells. And there's something quirky about the circuitry that it takes a very long time to charge them. Uh, the circuit board itself comes out... Uh, where's a screwdriver? 
it comes out like this. Quite easy, it's nicely manufactured. A notable feature here is that there are the four LEDs on the back of this. Let's turn this over so you can see that. And they've got little light boxes they go into to shield them from each other and also to provide a good diffusion of the light in this. It's quite a smart arrangement. The chip is, and I'll just bring it in here. Uh, hold on, I'll bring in there. Uh, I'll bring in lots of bits and pieces. Here is a picture of the circuit board for a start. This is where I should really just focus down onto the bench. Uh, is this a good idea or am I just going to completely ruin everything? Let's uh, focus like that and then just zoom in and see I have actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I will now drop a bit now so we can take a look at the printed circuit board. It's based on a chip called an MP2311CS and that uh, acts as the charge circuit. When it's charging, that uh, acts as a current regulator to charge the lithium cell based on the, the incoming supply through the micro USB port. The unit also does the full, it's basically a power bank chip that also drives the inductor for the output. Now, the output voltage, I don't know if it's just because these are quite low capacity cells, maybe they can't put out too much current. Uh, I did put it under test and when I put a load on it, well, let's do that. Let's plug this in and put a load on it. So it's showing 4.92 volts, which is a bad start because uh, actually it's no, it's jumped up to 5 volts. It's just cut out. Maybe this is turned up. This is cut out. It's a uh, oh, it's woken up again. Rightio. Uh, so it's showing about 5 volts very rapidly. As soon as you start drawing any current, that drops off 4.72 at 730. It's now at 800 milliamps. It's dropped to 4.61. Let's go up to one amp and see what it's at. So uh, let's uh, just nudge that back a little bit. So at round about one amp, it's dropped to 4.5 volts. And if you try going any higher, it rapidly falls off until it just cuts out completely. Let's, oh, there it goes. At two amps, it just cut out completely and reset the chip. So one amp, output at best, but if you've got a smart Android or other phone connected to this that's, that does that thing where as soon as it starts charging, it gently nudges the current up until it sees the voltage drop, then it's probably not going to charge at a very high speed. The circuit board is pretty textbook for this chip. Now, I did go online, I tried to find a data sheet for it. I did not have an awful lot of luck, but I found this which almost not quite seems to match the pinout. Everything's there except it just seems to be not quite right for one of the pins. Notably, I think it was pin one. I could be wrong. Pin one is going through a capacitor. Pin two, yeah, pin two looked a bit odd. It just seems slightly different from this uh, this uh, chip layout on this schematic. But other than that, almost everything is identical, including the component values. Because if we look at uh, the sense, uh, what we've got here, we've got the sense circuit that senses the output voltage. And whenever it drops below five volts, it boosts that up. So it uses a resistor to drop that, uh, presumably just to uh, avoid putting too high a load on the actual, uh, the batteries uh, in standby mode. And uh, that is matched. Whereas they've got 220k and 75 ohm, they've got 75 ohm here and they've got 240k. They have how many capacitors? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six capacitors here, including what looks like a pair going to the output, which will be these two. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, it's got the same number of capacitors. The LEDs are pretty much connected to the same pins. The button input is correct. The output to drive an auxiliary LED that, you know, some of these uh, power banks actually have the little LED on them that when you double click the button to wake it up, that lights. Uh, the pin that deals with that isn't just not connected to anything. And the when I was looking for this, I, I also noticed that uh, this circuit board has 
got a notch out here, and I wondered why it has those notches. And then I thought, maybe it's when they're manufacturing. Maybe they manufacture these in one continuous sheet, so that's for the connector to actually spread into. And while I was looking online for that chip, I found the exact circuit board, and they are all in a continuous sheet, so that is what that sort of notching is for. It's to allow for uh, the connectors to be put in in advance on the circuit board, so everything gets populated at once in one continuous sheet. Now, everything else uh, tallies up. The, it says 100k here, there's a 100k resistor. It says 1k here, there's a 1k resistor, which I guess may be actually setting the charge current. Not sure, without actually finding any more information. But this is very much one of these, this chip is very much like one of these ones that is for the Chinese manufacturing industry. It's not for the likes of us. They don't anticipate we'll ever need them, so I, I couldn't even find a Chinese data sheet. I guess they must just be sort of sent to the manufacturers by the suppliers and that's it. So why have they rated this 10,400 milliamp hour in the first place? Well, if you divide that by the four cells, that comes to 2,600 milliamp hour, and that's a really common capacity of cell. You find uh, these tend to fall into three categories. For the cheapy products like this, they'll use one amp hour cells. It's the cheapest 18650 you can get. It's quite easy for them to make that and roughly come up to up to the one amp hour capacity. 2,600 milliamp hour is kind of pushing it for capacity, but still easy to manufacture. So that's why many of the products come with 2,200, 2,400, 2,600. That's a region of the capacity. But once you start going to the three amp power cells, the price rockets because I suppose it's a status item. You know, it's it's jamming more capacity in. It lets manufacturers make much higher. Uh, run times for their products, but it also must make them a lot harder to manufacture and involve much more precise chemistry. So I guess that's why uh, the you rarely get the 3 amp power type cells. Now this other battery pack, this one actually came from TK Maxx, and I'm guessing it's the same inside. I will open it in another video, I think. I've already had a wee play. Let me show you the wee play I've had. Where is the spudger? I gingerly spudged this one because uh, it's still fully charged. And when I uh, took this off, I was wondering if it was going to be the same construction, but this is kind of glued on, and then there are screws. So I'm guessing that that will be into pillars that then join to this, and that's what locks it this in. So by removing those screws, that will hopefully release the mechanism. But that is for another video. This video is for the much shittier one. I think this is uh, a genuine 10,400 milliamp hour one. It certainly feels a lot heavier than this one does. So, um, it's interesting. I like the construction of this. I do like this whole plastic tray assembly and the way it latches in. It just it means that it's kind of hackable in a sense. You could put higher capacity cells in. But I have to say this limitation of both the output current and the charging current is a bit of a drawback. But for applications that, uh, you know, that weren't so critical, uh, that you just wanted maybe to drive some a string of LED lights or something like that or a low power USB device this might not be a bad option I'm just actually wondering here uh, do I have anything to test a super low current? I don't really have anything to test a super low current it'll be pink Dalek-y types of light but uh, so it will sense uh, the load connecting I wonder if it's always got 5 volts in the output even when it's turned off I suppose one way to find that out is to Probe it. Oh, let's probe it. Let's wait for it to shut off and then probe it and see what sort of voltage is on there. Is it just going to hold 5 volts on all the time? It will have charged capacitors up. No, the voltage has dropped way down to the battery voltage, more or less. So, uh, yeah, it do it doesn't stay awake. That's, that's one advantage of the super cheapo power supplies that I like. These generic, uh, like the Poundland power supplies, they always put out 5 volts. They don't uh, shut off when they detect a low load. They just always have the 5 volts there. I like that aspect uh, over these with the, with the sort of fancy features and the level indicator LEDs. But you know what? It's cheap. It was quite entertaining. It was quite fun to take to bits. The circuitry is quite interesting in it. It follows the very stereotypical layout of these where the uh, everything is just built into the one chip. You know, the boost circuit here, this is the pin 15 is obviously the transistor that uh, 
takes that from the positive rail, it pulls it to the negative rail briefly and then releases it, and then the uh, flyback sort of voltage then shoots through this diode to the output and charges those capacitors up. It's got the built-in sort of active current regulation for charging the cell in the first place with the current going out in pin 16. It's just fairly generic. It's just a, a very standard chip. So yeah, you know, it was cheap. It was a bit shitty. I knew it was going to be shitty. But relatively speaking, it, you know, the construction's nice and ultimately it's functional as a very low current power supply. But compared to something like this, it doesn't offer good value. This is the full, this is the full works. And it didn't cost a huge amount more than this thing. So uh, very much made to uh, fill the fake market where they can prevent present things as the 10,400 milliamp hour, when in reality, they're really not.